And then one other kind of cool story was uh, after Wes had died, um, I was I was still in this like horrible place, and I heard that Dangerous Toys, who was one of my favorite bands growing up, and should, has anyone in here even heard of Dangerous Toys? Well, nice, <laughs> fucking Phoenix. I, this is where I need to live. <laughs> hey guys, sorry for the shitty audio. I didn't bring my mic with me. Uh, I wasn't expecting to record tonight, but this is fresh in my mind. I want to talk about it. I am currently sitting inside the hotel. I had to drive to the fucking city to see this movie. It was only playing here one night. The director was in attendance. I had to make it. I had to get babysitters. I had to fucking really, it was a pain in my ass to get down here. But I did it and I'm glad I did. So this is a direct sequel to the previous installment. I know somewhere online it's saying, is it a reboot? Is it this or that? I'm here to tell you it is a direct sequel. Now Adam Green, as I said, was in attendance and he made sure to ask us very nicely to not give away any spoilers for any reveals or anything like that. So I will not do that. The only thing I can say is to make sure that you stay for the after credits sequence because there is one. Not after the main, main credits at the very, very end, but like, you know, that 20 second gap and that, you know, where they do like the big main trailers with the, with the actors' names and then it cuts to the cut screen. So after that scene, there's nothing else. I stayed all the way after and there wasn't. Um, uh, Adam Green was very cool. He told us a very funny story, and then he told us a very heartfelt story about how he made this and what eventually convinced him to do it. And he talked about his depression, and he talked about you know how he felt like he was a failure as a director and that he had a body of work that wasn't anywhere ever going to be as impressive as someone like Romero or Carpenter or this and that. And I guess it was George A. Romero himself who told him, like, what are you talking about? Like, the Hatchet series and these movies, Frozen, and you know, you have a fan base, you have this. And that was a very, very touching story. I'm very glad that he shared it with me. And not with me, he didn't come to me and hey, hey Jay, you know. No, he, to us, it was really cool. Um, also in attendance was another YouTuber, YouTube group called The Horror Show. I follow them, uh, cool guys, I met them. Uh, definitely looking forward to chatting with them in the future. So if you haven't checked them out, check them out. Um, now let's get into the movie. The movie itself is good. Um, much like the previous installment, this movie is mostly about the kills and the jokes. And the, you know, ridiculously over-the-top characters. And all those are present here. The difference between this one and the previous installments is that this one clearly has a lower budget. Um, but I don't think the budget hurts it too much. Although it does, as I, you know, it does have a VOD straight to Blu-ray kind of feel to it. Now Jeepers Creepers had that feel, and people are like, oh, Jeep or Jeepers Creepers three, should I say? And people are, oh my God, Jeepers Creepers three sucked. Yes, it did. This doesn't suck. This was able to take a smaller budget and make a fun film. Jeepers Creepers three was not able to do that. Now, you know. The main thing that anyone gives a shit when they're going into a hatchet film more than anything is, does this movie have good kills? Absolutely yes. And so if that's what you're in this for, yes, yes, yes. There are a lot of fucking great kills. And they're graphic, they're on screen, they're not cutaways, they're inventive, they're fun. So if you're excited about that, then you got another cool hatchet movie with a, with a cool set of kills that you'll be talking about with your friends. Now, one of the problems with this film is the jokes. A decent amount of the jokes hit, a lot of the jokes don't hit. And sitting in the theater with the director as he's sitting 50 feet away from you, you feel like an asshole when you're not laughing. And a lot of the theater wasn't laughing, and I was kind of like, this guy just told me about his depression and this and that, and here we're not laughing at jokes. And but I'm not gonna fake a laugh, you know? So there's a lot of humor that doesn't hit, but there's a lot, you know, there's a decent amount of humor that does hit and I liked it. And people may get these jokes and really enjoy them and maybe the whole time they'll laugh their ass off. But for me personally and for the crowd, we all seem to kind of laugh at the same moments and we all kind of seem to stay quiet at the same moment. So it seemed to be kind of universal which jokes were working and which jokes weren't. Um, one thing I was surprised about is seeing Felissa Rose in this so much. 
Um, she's actually a main character in this film, surprisingly enough. She's usually a cameo and stuff. There's other fun cameos in this. Um, Tiffany Shepis is actually plays a, a more substantial role than I was expecting to see her in. Um, and the only returning character is the, uh, oh God, uh, what's his character's name? Now I'm blanking. Uh oh. The Asian guy who survives, obviously, the third installment. Uh, he's the main character. Uh, very, very small plot line here. Uh, if you want to avoid any kind of spoilers, like even a plot line, you can shut this off. But uh, it's good. It's it's good. It's not great, but it's totally good. It's totally worth the wait. I don't know when the VOD will come out Blu-ray. He didn't get into anything like that. Um, but I'm guessing it'll probably be pretty soon. Um, but as I said, a very brief synopsis is the survivor of the, you know, the Asian guy, the survivor of the last movie is on a book tour sharing his story with the world about how he survived and he gets his agent gets a call trying to get him to go back to the woods and I'm sure you can guess what happens next so um so yeah that's just a brief synopsis I'm not going to get more into that uh but try to think is there anything else I want to say on this right now um no I mean, it's just, it's a fun time. If you're a Hatchet fan, I, I guess I can say what I think of the Hatchets. I like them. I think the third is my favorite one, personally. Um, it just has the most fun kills and stuff in it, to me, as I said. Uh, I, thought, I thought all of them were fun. And I kind of had about the same amount of fun and the same kind of time I had with all of them. As I said, this is a lower budget, so it shows. But I think that if you liked the first three, I can't imagine you're going to just despise this. Victor Crawley is back, and Victor Crawley is fucking gruesome and violent and awesome, as always. So, anyway, it's time for me to go to bed. Hopefully in the morning I can get up and go to Better Watch Out. That's playing here in one theater in all of this city. Um, so, yeah, hopefully I can get that done and I can give you guys my thoughts on that. But, uh... Victor Crawley, cool movie. Night.